How are we doing, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of FSI's PGA DFS Preview Show. I am your host, DK Nation 47 joined with John Cool19. John, um, it's been a couple weeks, uh, but it's good to see you and uh, good to be back into the PA, PGA atmosphere. Uh, quick little shout out uh, to the t-shirts that we are wearing from our uh, helpful friends at Woven.com. They are Woven underscore T's on Twitter. Uh, big thanks to you guys for the swag. This stuff's awesome. I love the t-shirts, some really cool designs. Uh, John, if you had noticed his his gear last year, he'd wrapping them all all throughout last year but uh yeah. i'm happy to be i'm happy to get them on my skin feels great um yeah i'm happy to be back talking some pga especially after a very exciting Ryder cup um i was i was away but i caught a lot of uh some of the fun on my way throughout my trip last weekend um but yeah big the right the usa man what can you say uh just dominating awesome. europe I mean, that's, that's rare for us to be <laughs> on the sure. very big winning side. Uh, well, you're, well, you're pretty, pretty stoked about that, huh? Yeah. I mean, I was not expecting that. Honestly, I kind of expected it to be either much closer or even a Euro win. It just seems like the, a lot of the golfers are kind of built for that style for the Euros, but you know what the U S I think overall just has more talent on the golfers. They fielded. Uh, it was really cool to see a, a couple things uh, that speed chip that was off the side of the cliff was absolutely wow, insane. Yeah. That was probably a shot of the tournament, even though it was day one. Uh, and then um, Markawa versus Hovland on the final day. Yes. Way too cool. I mean, the yes. planning for that sort of thing is just awesome. It could have been any two golfers, but for, to watch those two, two guys go against each other um, coming out the same uh, season out of college just really cool to see so a uh, fun weekend uh excited uh, i plan to be going to the Ryder cup when it comes back to minnesota handful yeah. of years more before that happens but uh that's really cool uh it was a cool weekend yeah absolutely um with that being said let's get into some picks guys we're going to be talking a little bit of the sanderson farms uh john do you have anything on the course uh that we can uh chew into uh before we get started yeah, absolutely. So uh, this course is Jackson, Mississippi. This is Country Club of Jackson. It's par 72. It's a long course, 7,400 yards. The Bermuda grass greens, uh, they are true Bermuda grass. These are small greens, though. It's similar to like a Donald Ross design here. Small, tricky greens, but the fairways, uh, they're not necessarily super wide open, but the rough is really not penal here. You'll see guys like a Camp Champ have talked about, honestly, that they're just going to hit it as far as they can, and it's easier to play out of the short rough if you're closer versus not getting that distance. So we are going to favor the distance golfers this week. It isn't an absolute must if you see a guy that uh, isn't quite ranked in the top 50. That doesn't mean you have to eliminate him from your pool right away. But if he's not doing that, he absolutely needs to be fire with the irons, and he needs to be really good with the putter. Otherwise, you're going to see a lot more of the long-distance drivers uh, move up the leaderboard this week. T to green, really important. Really, the around the green game isn't that important because this is going to be a birdie fest. We're expecting something, the winner, something like 20 under. The cut is probably going to be around one under, two under par, something like that. So you're really going to have to get after it and score this week. If you're going to be doing chipping, you're already losing strokes to the field or at least to the leaders here this week. So I'm not lo looking at that too much. Uh, par four scoring, there's uh, six holes that are 400 to 450 yards if you want to plug that into your modeling opportunities gained important on any birdie fest uh, and then par five scoring i mentioned it a little bit but uh, that's going to be critical this week you have to be able to get after these par fives anytime we talk about birdie fests par fives come up especially when there are four of them that is the case this week don't forget that in your modeling and making sure you choose guys uh, who can actually make some birdies and eagles and really get after the par fives here so that's a, about it again driving distance par five scoring uh and approach are my top categories I'm looking at this week. Absolutely. Very well done. Sanderson Farms Championship. All right, let's go with the picks. Uh, we have our favorites. I'm going to go with Mito Pereira at 9,900, 35 to 1. I'm seeing a lot of buzz in the industry over this guy um, on the betting market. I think 35 to 1 could be a really good bet. This is a guy that just came in T3 uh, a couple weeks back at, in Napa and um, three time winner on the Corn Ferry Tour. Uh, last last year, um, you know, he's not really uh, ex as dominant as you would think in the approach category, but I think a lot of that had to do 
uh, with his performance at, I believe, the Wyndham Championship. That was like a kind of the outlier for him, uh, finishing in 108th place after a bad round one. But this guy came in fourth at the Olympics, uh, sixth in John's home state of uh, at the 3M Open, fifth in Barbasol. So he has some you know, he, he has some experience in the PGA tour. He did come over here a little early. Uh, so I think Mito is going to be another uh, excellent pick, even at 9,900. Yeah. I think uh, he's going to be probably where I start cash games this week. What are your thoughts on Mito and who's your favorite? Sure. If I think you're right. If you can afford it and get up to the $9,900 price tag on cash, I think it's worth it for Mito this week. I already have an outright bet on him at the 35 to one odds. I think that's a lot better. Just looking at these two guys that we, we have as our favorites for 900 less, you get a guy that it has only 20 to one odds. So as far as uh, more of a cash play, I, I don't think there's any way you're going to get both of them in, in a, a cash line you love. Um, but Charlie Hoffman is probably my first click for cash. The 9,000 price tag, I think, is excellent. Uh, so that's really kind of where I often lean in cash is what is the guy that's uh, maybe mispriced or at least is going to give me some value there. But even outside of that here, he's just as consistent as they get right now. He's only missed one cut in his last 17 events, and that was at the Open Championship. Uh, and in that time, he's got 10 top 25 finishes. So we know he can move up the leaderboard and he is less likely to miss the cut than even some of the guys just priced right around him on DraftKings. Um, I do think he will be a very a chalky play this week. Very, very popular at the 9K price tag. He's more expensive if you look on like Yahoo or FanDuel or any of those. And honestly, I, I don't like the outright bet quite as much. In fact, that's why I have a Mito uh, ticket instead. Much better odds there. He does have three trips to Sanderson Farms, finished 35th, 23rd, and then 6th last year. So got good course history. I ranked uh, the courses here, or I ranked the players on long and easy courses, which this is. He ranks number one if you just look at total strokes gained on those courses. Uh, so I like that a lot. He comes in number three on approach, number two opportunities gained a lot to like here. You're going to see his name a ton if you're looking at Twitter this week. Give me a bunch of Charlie Hoffman, and uh, I, I can't go on without mentioning Will Zalatoris, a favorite around here at FSI. Uh, I will be playing him, unlikely in cash, but he will find his way into some of my GPP lineups. I don't know if he's a core play yet. That's really going to kind of come down to ownership, but can't go on without talking about Will Z. Yeah, I'm really hoping he can find a win in this swing events. I'm sure he's going to be playing most of yeah. them, so... Really pulling for him to get that W. Uh, I love both of these favorite plays. I like that shout out. Uh, let's get into our value picks. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off with Matt Wolf here at 8,500. Uh, this is a guy I'm hoping that can re return to form. Uh, I've seen as a large numbers out there as, as large as 50 to one. I think that'd be good value for a guy that has winning upside. Uh, as you know, you won in your state. Um, hopefully there's some correlation between the 3M Open and Sanderson Farms. Uh, I think he is a great fit with the distance off the tee, always in the fairway. Uh, guy can putt when he putts well. He scores birdies and birdies in bunches. Really good on them par fives as well. So I'm hoping Matt Wolf can return to form, re return to uh, some type of relevance and uh, put some of those really bad performances last year to rest and uh, hopefully he's healthy. That's the main thing. Uh, yeah. Wrist issue last year. So as long as he is hundred percent, he should be uh, a really good value at 8,500, a golfer that you would expect in the, in the nine K range. Next up, we have Taylor Pendrith. Uh, this is going to be with name. We talk about uh, quite often. I assume he's, his price will drop over the course of the season when the fields get better uh, yeah. at 7,800. Now uh, that's going to be, you know, uh, maybe we can get a little bit of lower ownership. I'm not sure. Uh, guys are really clinging on to this guy. Bomber off the tee from Canada. Uh, really good at Napa. T31. I think he had a little slow of a Sunday, and that's kind of what held him back from a really strong finish. Good putter of the golf ball. Another guy that I real I like because of the length and how he can get the ball into the fairway off the tee. I think that's going to be a really big uh, difference for Pendrith in his game. Guy played on the Corn Ferry Tour almost weekly. Uh, so happy to see him over here and happy to have him uh, continuously. And uh, now in a larger scale for me, I can play multiple lineups with Pendrith. You know, on the Corn Ferry, it's, it's, <laughs> it was only one lineup and done. And he usually was in my lineup no matter what. So 
uh, yeah, like these two. Uh, what are your thoughts on these value plays and who do you got? Sure. I like them both. I'm a huge Wolf fan, always have been. Um, I really yeah. like what he's doing. Really where he struggles most, and I mentioned earlier, earlier, and that's around the greens. And if he's just missing, if he's not missing greens, we don't have to worry about that this week. Uh, he should be just aiming for the flag over and over. If the irons get hot, I could see Matthew Wolf having a great chance to win this event. Uh, and you're right, Pendrith, uh, he's just, everybody loves him that is in the D DFS community that's been playing him on the Corn Ferry Tour. The fact that he got elevated up this year, he's going to get quite a bit of popularity, but then we're going to go to some other events as the season moves on where he's just going to drop off in popularity. We're gonna get yeah. go, we are going to get him at super low ownerships at really good prices on DraftKings. So excited to play him this week and then even probably more so going forward what he's going to offer um, as far as just name recognition. People don't know him widespread yet. So um, right. for me, a couple of value guys, these are maybe a little more common names when it comes to uh, playing guys on Trap Kings, Carlos Ortiz. Uh, for me, 8,600, I think is a great price here. 40 to one odds. His last 10 events, he's got eight out of 10 missed cuts. I like that. Uh, both of those missed cuts were at majors. He does not necessarily step up in those events, but I think he plays really well on some of these smaller ones like Sanderson Farms. His last three years here at the Country Club of Jackson, third place, fourth place. He did miss the cut last year, but I really do like that top five upside, especially at this under 9K pricing. I think that gives you a lot of value here. Uh, he's excellent on par fives, ranks sixth in this field. The putter has been cold though, and, and really I kind of expect a bounce back from that. Uh, it's been much colder than his average if you look a little more long term. So he has been struggling there, but not so much uh, with his tee to green game as well as the approach. He's 17th on approach right now in this field, last 36 rounds. Uh, really good opportunities gained numbers as well. So I could see him having a great week here, even in consideration for a cash play at this pricing. Uh, and then Aaron Weiss, he's a guy that uh, I think gets quite a bit of like cult popularity on Twitter. The reason why is this is a birdie maker. Uh, Aaron Wise isn't necessarily always going to finish at the top of the leaderboard. In fact, we haven't seen him really necessarily pushing that uh, leaderboard ranking, but what he does is score on DraftKings, and that's why we really like him, especially this 8,300 price I think is great on him. He's made his last nine cuts on tour. He's played really well in the playoffs to uh, 21st at Northern Trust, 17th at the BMW. Those were excellent fields he was playing in. He's made his last three cuts here at Sanderson Farms. That includes 17th place last year at this event. Uh, I talked about the birdie numbers. He's first birdie or better in this field. He is second in DK points over his last 36 rounds in this field. Uh, so a lot of the guys, you can't really consider um, their DK points since they've been playing on Corn Ferry. But when it comes to DK scoring, Wise is up there and has been for a while. So I love that. What's not good about Aaron Wise is the putter. That same 36 rounds, he ranks 124th in putting. Uh, it's just not good at all. If he can play even just zero strokes gained for the week, he should have an excellent week. Top 10 upside here for Aaron Wise. Uh, I'll be playing quite a bit of him, I believe, uh, this week. Yeah, I'm not going to like Aaron Wise is a cash play in my point of view. Um, that 8,300 price tag and the fact that all the all the things that you had mentioned with the birdies, I'm not I'm not really going to be scared about that putter. I think what you mentioned about the consistency with his cut making, it really stood uh, really jumped off the page for me. And I think he's got some pretty good upside. Uh, Jackson, Mississippi is pretty semi coastal. You know, he sure. really dominates those coastal courses. So I mean, I'm going to go with it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I like both of these guys. Wise for sure going to be in some cash uh, builds for me me so i uh, love that call uh next up we have our sleepers page and i think we're you know coming off of a really successful year with this page i hit a huge number with cage lee outright uh so um you know we've had various you know dk sleepers that have just paid off as far as you know high high success in lineups really hoping this page continues to be good to us I'm going to go with the guy that's kind of forgotten. Um, you know, we have all these new corn Ferry tour graduates coming in and, you know, we have Davis Thompson here at, you know, 200 to one, 6,100 an absolute mid price. Yeah. I, I mean, an absolute, a, a stud off coming out, coming out of college. He made the tour early uh, as far as, you know, exemptions and everything go. And, you know, and he didn't have to earn it uh, quote unquote uh, with the corn Ferry tour graduation. So He's here. He's going to have, you know, about a year uh, to 
you know, probably another nine months to go here on sponsor exemptions. I think Davis Thompson is going to be the guy here that everyone thinks, you know, why am I not playing him at 61? And, you know, and I'm playing guys, you know, like Chad Ramey at 7K coming off a really poor performance, you know, more coming off a poor performance for about $1,000 more. I think Davis Thompson has just as much upside uh, as those guys. Um, and he already has uh, a 35th at the Palmetto and, and good T to green game as well. Uh, he ranks pretty high in the model, uh, 30th, I believe. Uh, that's that was really encouraged. 30, yeah, 30th is really encouraging to see. 29th in Four. opportunities game. Uh, he, he has the ball striking pedigree that we're looking for. I think Davis Thompson could be a steal at 6,100. That helps you get to Will Zalatoris, to Sam Burns. It kind of helps you sure. fit in multiple, uh, nine, maybe a 9K guy in the 11K Sam Burns or something like that. Uh, this guy's kind of the key that unlocks that uh, build. So I'm, I'm in on Davis Thompson. Uh, what about you? Uh, what are your thoughts? Sure. Yeah, we've talked up Davis a couple times on this show. So I do like Davis uh, and the price is just excellent. We're not going to see him this low, maybe ever again, unless he plays in a major or something like that, that uh, yeah. he's at the bottom of the field. But uh, for me, in really as a sleeper, I went Adam Shank. I think the price is just too good to pass up here. He's potentially even a cash play for me this week. He's made four out of four cuts at Sanderson Farms. That does include one top 10 finish. Uh, the others were in the 30s and 40s, but still making cuts under 7K is awesome. He's made eight out of his last 10 cuts on tour. He rates out really well on long, easy courses, like I mentioned with Hoffman. Um, his last 36 rounds, he's 10th on par five scoring, 29th in distance, which we said was really important this week, 20th opportunities gained, and the putter is really good as well. He ranks 15th over his last 36 rounds with the putter, so I like all that with Shank. I think the biggest factor for me was probably the pricing here. You would rarely see a guy that's really like under 100 to 1 that's also under 7K pricing. All the guys around him. And, and I'm seeing 80 to one here on the uh, DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm seeing a, maybe a bit higher number elsewhere, like 125. But um, a lot of the guys in this range are are like even 175, 200 to one odds to win uh, to find him at 80 or 125. If you're going to bet outright, make sure you get a good number. But as far as DraftKings go, I think that the number is just too good to pass up here with Shank. Absolutely. You know, I'm a big Shank guy here at 6,700. Really happy to see him stick below the 7K range so yeah. I can keep playing him in my lineups. All right, John, thank you uh, for helping me, us break this down. One more time, guys, if you can help out woven.com, that is uh, woven.com, W-O-H-V-E-N.com. Those guys were awesome to hook us up with some shirts. Uh, big thank you to them. John Cool. 19 man let's get it going swing season pga uh let's make some money while everyone's playing nfl <laughs> let's keep it keep it going the last last event was awesome let's uh let's keep on rolling we always talk about how fun swing season is and and this is it. a great week to play some of our favorite uh tournaments absolutely all right guys thank you like subscribe and comment below with any questions you may have all right guys i'm tk nation 47 that was john cool 19 thank you enjoy your night good luck